to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Prayer is a major foundational key in this kingdom, but it is not the only key. I hope you know that by now. Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. So the prayer ministry has its jurisdiction and it has its assignment. But prayer was so constructed, I, I would always use this expression that when prayer is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. So in any case, you will still need to pray. Are we together? But to just believe that prayer alone will solve all problems, it may not be accurate because there are keys that are given in this kingdom. Are we together? This auditorium has a number of doors, as I can see. Just because you have the key to say the restroom does not mean you have the key to the office. Is that true? If you need to use the restroom, you'll be happy because you have the key that opens it. But if you need to use the office, then you are stranded, although you are holding a key. Africa being a very superstitious and religious cont continent, we have a lot of regard for prayer. And we do all kinds of things that we call prayer. And we expect prayer to evolve into any key we need to open many doors. And sadly, we stand stranded before doors because we only have one key. Um, I'm going to be teaching you on the assignment, the jurisdiction of prayer. But then I want you to understand in truth, wisdom is a key. Relationship is a key. Prayer is a key. Are we together? He, when he gives you the keys of the kingdom, then you handle these keys and you can open the various doors that need to be opened as far as your life and your destiny is concerned. But now since we're dealing with the subject of prayer, I want to show you something very powerful that the Lord showed me um, from scripture. What is the assignment of prayer and what is the jurisdiction of prayer? I found from scripture that there are about four or five major assignments of prayer in the life of a believer let's run through them as we pray number one luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 the first assignment of prayer and in order of priority this is about the most important assignment of the prayer ministry in the life of a believer transformation the real assignment of prayer in the life of a believer is not requests, a means for obtaining requests. The primary assignment of the prayer ministry is the spiritual mechanism that evolves you to superior dimensions of yourself. So you can evolve to a dimension of you that was not yesterday. The weak you can become the strong you the timid you can become the powerful you the undiscerning and carnal you can become the spiritual you and the process midwifing that the former you and this new you is prayer it came to pass about and eight days after these sayings that he took Peter and John and James and the Bible says he went into a mountain to pray are we together now verse 29 the bible says and as he prayed are you observing this the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening through prayer this is what prayer achieves in the life of a believer transformation that happens through prayer believe me 
no matter what is wrong with your life subject yourself constructively to the ministry of prayer and watch yourself evolve into levels that will surprise you i have seen weak people become strong through consistent prayer i've seen people without discernment grow into certain appreciable levels of handling the gifts of the spirit and that's through prayer everybody say transformation Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. It's called transformation. The process that makes you become like Christ in experience. It says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. You can pray wrong things out of your life. You can pray the virtue of the spirit to be at work in your life number two why do we pray prayer is the authorized platform as revealed from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises that every time you desire to make requests and to obtain promises the authorized the scriptural platform to make this happen is prayer mark 11 and verse 24 jesus was teaching on the subject of faith then he said this therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when not if ye pray in prayer he says believe that thou receivest them so we receive in prayer and then you shall have it i'm sure that you know that there is a difference between receiving and having you only have what you have received. You cannot have what you have not received. Receiving is a spiritual reality. And then having is the physical manifestation. You only have what you have received. Are we together? Very important. The Bible says when you pray, among the many things that should happen in your prayer is that you receive. Everything God has given, you receive in prayer and then you can have it. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7 gives us the biblical cure for anxiety. It says be anxious. The word there is not careful. The word there is anxious. Be anxious for nothing, he says, but in everything. That means the prayer ministry covers every aspect of your life. There is no aspect of your life that prayer cannot cover. In everything, he says, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. Have you read that in your Bible? He never said to assume that God knows. Let your request, let the rent issue, let the family issue, let the issue in your job be made known unto God. Be anxious for nothing, he says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. Next verse. And the peace of God. This is one of the ways God answers prayers. Peace is a voice. When he speaks, his answer comes in peace. He will speak peace to his people he says the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ so we see that the second assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is to make requests and to obtain promises number three why do we pray what is the purpose of prayer in the life of the believer are you ready for decrease and for creation hmm. prayer is the scriptural platform that gives the believer an opportunity to make decrease and to create possibilities in your life that it is possible to make to be what was not through the power of decrease and that in prayer this is very very powerful job chapter 22 and verse 28 job 22 and verse 28 it says that you will also decree a thing 
and it shall be established unto you who is the you the one who made the decree not the one who needs the result the one who made the decree you shall also declare a thing and it shall be established unto you so light will shine on your ways numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 1 4 and then 28 say unto them as i leave saith the lord just as you have spoken in my hearing so will i do unto you just as you have spoken just as you have spoken can i tell you it is not only god you speak to you speak to things in prayer the character of faith according to the pauline revelation is that is in the similitude of how god behaves and that he can call things to be that were not he can call things and make things to appear that were not decrease and creation i hope you realize that creation has not stopped you would not be an effective christian to believe that creation has stopped mm -mm. the fact that god rested does not mean creation stopped we can make things to appear that is not my goodness this is powerful we can make things to appear that is not we can call things we can call realms we can call dimensions we can call possibilities that is not yet within your space you don't need to look for them what you are looking for is also looking for you you just need to know how to call it to you hallelujah in prayer you can make decrees in prayer you can create possibilities right from where you are you can create a life of beauty and a life of glory in prayer this is very powerful it's an advantage that puts everybody at the same position that regardless my limitations territorially regardless my limitations by reason of my background the prayer ministry if understood can veto those limitations and call into my life something i was not born with and call into my life something my certificate did not carry i can call possibilities into my life you have to believe this so there is no need you see this was what apostle james was teaching and we'll wrap up with that one he said from whence come wars and rumors of wars and all of these things he says it comes from the loss that is in your heart it comes as a token of the frustration you have for not having results and he said it is unnecessary because everyone can ask and receive so there is no need to be jealous there is no need to be angry at another man's result there is a possibility to also attract same to your life hallelujah even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not hold on he never said the things that do not exist be not means it's not within your frame of sight every single bone from the army that disintegrated in Ezekiel 37 was still there but it was just scattered beyond the scope of sight under a certain condition it came back not every condition listen to me under a certain condition everything can come your assignment is to use prophetic words to direct your results and your answers to your place when you make decrees listen carefully when you make decrees and you create possibilities and the raw material for that creation is the word of god remember the bible says john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the bible says the same was with god in the beginning and then verse 3 says that all things how many things 
all things it didn't say all spiritual things it says all things that means the unit of every physical material is not an atom it is the word of god science has only exhausted itself all things were made by him and he said without him without him means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made so I can call to my life when you look at me all you see is not all there is there are some things coming there are some things coming and it is not only things you call you can call realms you can call dimensions you can call spiritual qualities to come to your life believe me this is true you can call the ministry of men to your life the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon the king sent with his word he didn't need to find out where joseph was he sent and they brought him out of his dungeon if the king sent for joseph there are things you need to send for listen 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 when jesus needed to have a triumphant entry he could not go at that state and he gave an instruction he said go to a city whose road divide you will find something there that is for me lose it and let it come and if they ask you what is your audacity tell them the king had need of it there are things you have need of for your triumphant entry and you must learn how to call it forth and let it be loosed and come to you if they ask you tell them the king had need of it I hope you believe what you are hearing yes. how do you think ordinary men rise there are no guarantees in life nobody gives you a guarantee as a man of God that I will come to your church nobody gives you a guarantee that I will help you vain is the help of a man if God does not instruct them can I tell you waiting for things to just happen by default will recycle pain in your life you can call things everything has an ear biology misled us even though we respect it to say there are living and non-living things interesting everything is alive it depends on who is speaking everything is alive it depends on who is speaking there were other people who spoke and the bones were quiet but the prophet said i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound you can call forth health you can call forth resources you can call forth all kinds of things you can call forth ravens from wherever they are to come and meet you at brook cherith Listen, when you know this, your prayer life becomes exciting because it is sponsored by an understanding. Lose that coat. And if they ask you, because someone will ask you, based on what is this result coming, your reply should be, the king had need of it. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? Are we learning? Let's finish up to pray. In fact, let me stop here and just show us three hindrances to effective prayer based on the revelation that Apostle James gave us. Let's just look at it quickly and then we'll pray. Apostle James began to teach us in James chapter 4. Please pay attention now. James chapter 4 and verse 3. James 4 and verse 3. Let's start from verse 1 for sake of um, clarity. 
now here's what he's saying apostle james is teaching us on prayer from whence come wars and fightings among you he's challenging wars fightings and all of these things he says come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members the word lust there in this context is not a demonic thing or a satanic thing the, the word there simply desires that there is you have a desire a craving for something you want to see certain things happen in your life because you see psychologically speaking one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress to the degree to which you perceive you are moving forward you will find fulfillment if at any point you find yourself stagnated it has an effect on you so he's saying from whence come your frustrations and all of that is it not among the lost that war in your members verse 2 ye lost desire now and have not and your desperation even gets you to a point where you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war yet ye have not simply because ye ask not He's saying there is no reason to fight. There is no reason to covet and be angry at another person's testimony. It's unnecessary. It's, it's an insult to the benevolence of God. He's saying when you hear that God is doing something, there's no reason being angry as if it was only one left and it was given to another. He said the only reason why you do not have is that you do not ask. Then verse 3, he now begins to give us the template for effective prayer and what to guard against he says ye ask so there are people who have done the asking and yet receive not he teaches us that it is possible in your prayer life to ask and yet not receive and he tells you why he says because ye ask amiss everyone say amiss he uses a very interesting word amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust one more scripture and then i'll build together what he has said a miss there means with wrong motives that means your motive is already corrupted for desiring it are we together even though you are asking but hidden within your heart is a corrupted motive james chapter one same james chapter one from verse five to seven james chapter one from verse five to seven Here's what he says. He's dealing with the issue of lack and how to want every time you lack. If any of you lack, not just wisdom, he's teaching on lack. How to get when, the mo when you find out that, that you are in lack. If any of you lack, he says the cure for lack is to ask of God. He was speaking with respect to wisdom, but it is not limited to wisdom if any of you lack wisdom he says let him ask of god that giveth unto how many men and how much does he give god gives to all men and he gives liberally and upbraided not he says and it shall be given to him verse 6 reading to 7 he says but let him ask in faith this is another condition nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed seven serious tragedy here for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord so Apostle James gives us three reasons why prayers are not answered number one asking amiss you know what it means to ask amiss to ask amiss means to ask outside of the provision of his will to ask without a scriptural backing this is where ineffective prayer comes most people just pray superstitious prayers most believers pray communicating lamentations and just because they've dissipated energy in praying amiss they believe that because of the time they will be heard to ask amiss means to pray outside of his will he said this is the confidence that we have 
apostle john now was teaching us that when we ask anything in accordance to his will he hears us his will means his word listen to me wordless prayer is prayer that is unanswered god is touched by the feelings of our infirmity but he responds only to his word you have to understand this there are no sentiments when it has to do with exalting the word of god because he has exalted the word even above his office he chose to submit to the word so when you pray an emotional prayer it will only comfort you because you are expressing your pain but there is no answer guaranteed from scripture the first assignment of a believer therefore in approaching prayer is knowledge not praying knowledge so that the things you are asking for will be in accordance to the will of god the guarantee that god will answer you is that you are praying consistent with scripture most believers do not pray in accordance to scripture most believers i can tell you this for free most with all due respect and honor most ministries do not pray approaching the prayer ministry with intention and with spiritual intelligence derived from scripture and so we find out that we keep saying a lot of things and dissipating energy and we hardly receive answers to prayer the margin of energy that is dissipated in prayer versus the result that comes is so small and it's not motivating enough this was the frustration of the disciples teach us to pray there's something about our prayer life we can't keep shouting and yelling and rolling around and like as though we are the prophets of Baal there is something about the accuracy of your prayer that for every time you dissipate energy there are results that justify it can I tell you the truth I believe that is in the heart of your man of God that for every time you come here praying that by the next time even if it's morning and night the distance between morning and night you should return with strange results that you stand here and say what happened I don't I, I know I said this in the morning and by evening God has taken five months and put it in one day can I tell you every time you receive real results you become too grateful to be quiet the greatest motivation for evangelism is personal results read your bible the madman in gadara the woman at the well every time people obtain genuine personal results they were too grateful even when they were instructed don't tell anybody how do I hide that God lifted me? How do I hide that I've entered another realm? How do I hide that the favor of God is upon me? Can that be hidden? Evangelism was supposed to be a byproduct of consistent results in the life of the believer. Let me repeat. Evangelism was designed by the intelligence of God to be a byproduct of consistent result your audacity in inviting people is based on your personal testimony come see a man who had told me it's not a suggestion come see a man I'm, I'm calling you with a guarantee and when they came to Jesus they came because the woman asked them to come but when they encountered him they said now we believe not just because you brought us paraphrasing we have seen him for ourselves I'm agreeing with your man of God in prayer that beginning from tonight that you will shift to another dimension of results in the name of Jesus Christ can I tell you do not downplay the power of results do not downplay the power of results the end of any argument is results results that are derived from Scripture because how they come is also how they are maintained are we together praying amiss means to pray without a scriptural backing without faith with wrong motives that in approaching prayer 
you must approach prayer knowing this that if I pray with a wrong motive a motive that does not seek to bring glory to the Lord through that result it is within the power of God based on my motive as an act of his mercy to deny me that answer it is not every denial to answer that is demonic or satanic there are many prayers that are not answered because God loves you he's not answering the prayer is proof that he's determined that you grow because an heir the Bible says for as long as he's a child that he differeth not from a slave even though he be Lord of all no matter how you love your child you will not take the key to your car and give a six seven year old child so there are certain times that prayers answers to prayers are withheld and God accelerates your maturity to gain the stature that can have that because you see there are certain results that when God gives you in your life, he must train you on how to maintain them. It will bring attacks. It will bring jealousy. You must be fortified with the spiritual understanding to maintain certain realms of results before it comes. When God suddenly gives you a hundred million or one billion naira, you will be surprised at the attacks that had no business coming to you. That will fish you out wherever you are because of what has happened you don't need to look for anybody's trouble if we are living in the world of men the whole world lies in wickedness so before God will commit that dimension of wealth to you he will have to train you to know how to put the full armor of God so that you can withstand all the wiles of darkness are we together there are people who God gave one million and we didn't see them in church again. They ran away, did all kinds of things until it finished and then they run back because you see every time you forget your source, remember Abba, the prodigal son for as long as he was with his father, there was no lack. The day he left, lack began. He depleted until he was eaten with swine. He said how many hired servants as my father and i'm here feeding with the swine he says i will arise and i will go back to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the moment he met his father there was restoration the signet ring was put on him again the robe of royalty came upon him and a fatted calf was killed for him hallelujah we are going to pray. And in this moment of prayer, I'm going to challenge us to take seriously our time of prayer. We are going to pray in the spirit. And as we pray, pray with this understanding that in prayer, you are evolving. You are evolving you know how a snake molts there's something called molting when a snake wants to leave his former self into a newer self it will subject itself through the process of molting it will shed off the old skin so when you look at the size of the old skin that is no longer the size of the new snake that is the former self the confused you can pray into the circumspect you the weak you can pray into the strong you the favorless you can pray into the you that has favor like Jabez you can pray oh that thou wouldest bless me the Bible says the mother cursed him she named him after her pain because I bore you in sorrow but he came to a point where he had to change that narrative. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. I can tell you stories of what the prayer ministry has done in my life. Hmm. Let me tell you a little story. Pastor Sir, when the Lord asked me to come to Abuja from Zaria, I, I fought with God for years because I said, Lord, I don't want, I'm not sure that I'm ready for this. Let me just remain there in peace. I'm not, I'm not sure that I want to come and do ministry in Abuja. 
I understand how expensive the life is, the complexity of, I'm, I don't, I'm not ready for all of these stories. I just want to remain there to serve the Lord peacefully. Finally, when I came, I remember just looking around and saying, where in the world do you start from? And then I remembered that in prayer, we can make manifest the things that are not. Listen carefully. The Lord gave me an instruction to go and get the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. These four. And for a period of six months, gratefully for the pandemic, I looked at the local governments and I found out there were six local governments in this city. And I laid my hands and I began to pray. And I remember a time came in prayer. I don't know what it is that happened to me. Abuja became small. I, I don't mean to be arrogant. I, I, you understand? I sincerely, I, I looked at it and it suddenly, you know how like you're looking at a child playing. I said, what is the population in this city? And it suddenly became small. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Prayer with power deflates challenges. Because every challenge comes in its magnified form. It takes a prayer ministry to deflate it to its true size. It is the character of Satan to magnify simple things and make it, how will I get this one billion? How will I get this? How will this happen? When I looked at it, I said, this is it. This is not, this is not. There was something that he did to my mind and it was in prayer laying my hands and speaking and I said Lord now I agree with you and the rest to God be the glory so I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables my dear people every man you see who God has helped and shown mercy with any kind of exploit it didn't just come just by dressing and speaking English. No. Your prayer ministry is your control room where you play life like a chess. When everything is done from there, then you come out. And you begin to watch things gravitate with a charm-like quality towards you. And you are wondering what is all this? everybody to help you believe me based on the intelligence we get from scripture is within your vicinity help us don't just come they are called you can pass them every day and they do not even know the bible says there were many widows in Zarephath. that means elijah passed some but there was a woman only god knows what that woman was doing don't assume he just went to her. God cannot isolate one widow out of so many and send a prophet to her. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we, you see, it's good to give testimonies, but sometimes testimonies can be misunderstood. That's why most times men of God just keep quiet and they don't want to say things because people misunderstand it for pride and all of these things but i can tell you this if you understand the ministry of word-based prophetic prayer you will change your life like night and day you will marvel and wonder listen for some of you right now in all honesty it may be that nothing physical has happened in your life and you are spending your time praying with intelligence and someone asks you what do you do for a living and you say nothing think again nothing <laughs> you spend time praying and they ask you what do you do and you say nothing <laughs> 
nothing what do you have in your house she said nothing except when you spend time praying and calling for things let me tell you you did the same thing and better than an engineer who is working with a construction company was doing because that's exactly what you were doing you spent your day building and creating something that is about to manifest I hope you know that everything is built twice it is first built in the realm of the spirit and then it manifests so the next time you spend time praying and you say nothing think again I'm saying this because we're about to pray and as you pray in the spirit and as you stretch in the spirit I want you to use your imagination because there are two prayer warriors one is you the other is your mind they are all prayer warriors and God answers both he says now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask and think your thinking is praying too so don't just use your mouth and keep your brain your mouth can be saying Lord bring this blessing and your thinking is saying God forget about it you will answer both your mouth and your thinking must be effective prayer warriors your mind must participate in your prayer hallelujah Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all his commandments which I command you this day it says that the Lord your God will exalt you above all the nations how many nations all the nations this is not a parable it was a literal statement when I read the Bible I believe it I truly believe it Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.